Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you for a day like this, the beginning of another week, a sign that you, O oh God, are always with us. We entrust everything of ours into your care. Take, O oh God, all that we have and all that we are into your hands or onto the altar of sacrifice. And in return, grant unto us every spiritual blessings that we need under the heavenly places that no action of ours may ever take place without the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. For we live and move and have our being to give glory to your name. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Monday of the second week in ordinary time, our gospel for today is from Mark chapter 2, verse 18 to 22. Mark chapter 2, verse 18 to 22. And we have for a little theme, Jesus, Lord over tradition. Jesus, Lord over tradition. I take the reading. The disciples of John and and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected. Why do the, why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered them, can the wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshaken cloth on an old one, on, on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away the new from the old and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wine skin. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wine skin. Beloved, the gospel of the Lord. Arise, Catholic faithful, rejoice and renew. We are now in the gospel of Mark chapter two, in the chapter two. And if you would remember from last week, Jesus had been healing on the Sabbath and he had been doing things that the people will be asking, why on this day? Now we have for our theme, Jesus, Lord over tradition. Is it possible that certain traditions, perspective, worldviews, ideas, vision, way of life will prevent us from experiencing the true teaching of Christ? This is something that every one of us should be asking ourselves. Yes, it is possible 
that just by the way you think and see things, you hear God's message differently. You implement it differently because you think, you expect that it should be this way or that way. So now people go to Jesus, the disciples of John and the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. This was purely tradition. These people went to Jesus and asked, why don't your disciples do the same? Today, as we are there, people will come and ask you, why don't you people do this? Why don't you people do that? Is it just a life of copy, copy? Many of us today, Christians, have no solid basis of a relationship with Christ. Ours is, these people are doing this. Let us also do some. So it has become a copy, copy. This was what the disciples, the Pharisees, scribes at the time of Jesus were doing. They were just adding on and adding on and adding on to traditions because it looked nice. It looked nice. It looked okay. So they just added on like that. But this should not be with us. Why do you ask Jesus why we fast? Just because, not because they wanted to know the meaning of fasting, but because they wanted Jesus and his disciples to do it as these people have been doing it. Why? His church is doing that. Let us do this. These people are doing this. Let us do that. Even in marriages, relationship, schools and education, politics and everything. It's just somebody is doing it this way, let's do that. That has become the order of the day. Popular acclamation. This is what is in vogue. This is what everybody is doing. We cannot be doing what everybody is doing merely. We have to do what is right. We have to do what is right. Today, we have to pray that God will give us the strength, the wisdom to be able to pursue that which is right, not that which everybody is merely doing. The disciples or the primary fast of the Jews was on the day of atonement. So for the Jews particularly, the Jewish law commands Jews to fast only once in a year. It commands the Jews to fast only once in a year. That was on the day of atonement. However, the Pharisees had added so many laws such that it was, you could do many, many other fasts. Now, on the second and the fourth days, of every week, that is Monday and Thursdays for the, for the Pharisees, they would always be fasting. What was the purpose of the fast in this case? At this time, it had become a sign of disaster, voluntary abasement during times of great distress and trial. So for the Pharisees, Every time they would, that's why Jesus says that when you fast, do not look gloomy. For them, it was now a way to let people see that, yes, I, you know, you have that gloomy, sad, uh, you know, like, and that for them was that which portrayed to people that you are somebody better than another. That's what is happening. Somebody will come and ask you, Father, why don't you tight? Why don't you do this? It's not that the person is interested in the titan or giving for that matter, because these people or somebody is saying that there is tight or something, therefore, but you don't have, no. Even if you ask the person give, on oh, man. But has heard people say it, so it's just wanting to do it. Jesus is saying that if we want to do anything, it must be because of your relationship with him, not because people are doing it. 
says that, yes, the presence of I, Jesus, the son of God on the earth, is the sign that I have brought joy. When I am taken away, he will fast. And truly, he has been taken away. So we have to fast. But do we fast merely because of what? Ask yourself, how many times do people fast just to be able to get close to God? People fast that a problem will be solved. People fast that something good will happen to them, but not that they will get closer to Christ. This has once again alluded us. Let us pray, my dear brethren, now that Jesus is gone, fasting has a place among us. It should remind us of our dependence on God, of our need for mercy, of our need for the power of God for salvation for those who believe in the gospel. But please, don't just fast because it is a time of fast. No, fast fast to get closer to God. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, mothers and fathers, we have another week that we can get to God and ask him to let us get closer to him. Don't be a copy, copy Christian. Be a Christian whose questions whose desires, whose search is all based on a love for Christ. God richly bless you today. Amen.